Aston Martin and Otmar Safnauer have parted ways after the team had a disappointing start to their new era, having finished 7th in 2021. The team have opted to take their time before sourcing Safnauer's replacement, looking to their current senior management to take over in the interim. But after a poor season, what's next for Aston Martin? Let's have a look. My name's Andy and this is Behind the Drive. Aston Martin are a hot prospect in Formula 1, perhaps the team on the grid that most people are tipping as one for the future, as they have had huge investment from Lawrence Stroll. They're making a huge investment with a new factory on the way, and they invested in their driver lineup for 2021, with Sebastian Vettel coming on board, a driver with world championship winning experience. In this video, I'll take a look at the split between Otmar Safanauer and Aston Martin, and what this means for the team's future in the sports after a disappointing first season. Otmar is gone. Dropping a team principal is relatively rare in Formula 1. Unlike the world of football management, the team leads or managers tend to be given time to work with their project and lead on team management in the long term. The main reason for this is probably because, unlike in football, there's no threat of relegation from the Formula 1 grid. Although there is, of course, declining prize money and sponsorship money that comes with poor performance over time. This is where dropping Safnau so early into the Aston Martin project is a real surprise for me. Yes, the Romanian-American team principal has been at the Silverstone-based team for 12 years, joining them as Force India in 2009, but his performance over that time has been superb, gaining a reputation for being an excellent leader and leading on the creation of a good car on a shoestring budget. He did this by managing the overall spend at the team incredibly well, ensuring that they didn't spend much on anything that wouldn't improve car performance. But in 2021, Safnau was put in a very different position. Aston Martin is a team that should be running at, or at least close to, the maximum budget cap going forwards. So when he has the vast amount of money to spend, can the team principal perform in the same way? There may have been a doubt from Lawrence Stroll as to whether Safnau could step up into the role within a growing team, but it's impossible to know that for sure. Personally, I would back Safanauer. Over the last 10 years or so, he's been one of the best performing team principals for all of the reasons that I've mentioned previously. He's also created a likeable team, which has been a fan favourite for their ability to overperform compared to their budget. From an outsider perspective, it feels like he should be able to follow those same pillars for success and still achieve great results with more money. For me, in 2021, with my 2020 hindsight glasses on, Aston Martin were always going to struggle. The team had copied the Mercedes 2019 concept for 2020, and with the restrictions on car developments, with token spends as well as the floor regulation changes, they would likely struggle to produce a competitive car, given their fundamental understanding of the car concept would be limited at best, particularly when compared with the Mercedes team. In addition, the team should have, and I expect they have, focused on 2022. The new regulations provide an opportunity for Aston Martin to show what they can do with the now additional resources that they have. Plus, the fact that a number of new team personnel have been recruited to improve their car development means that in theory this car could be better. Now, that might not be the case given there's a large change in the workforce and potentially the ways of working as well, but that remains to be seen. So for me, keeping Safnauer on board for continuity could have been a good opportunity to at least see how the team have done in terms of their 2022 car compared to the rest of the grid. But perhaps this is a sign that according to Stroll at least, the development isn't going as he might want. The alternative to this is that Safnauer was the driving factor in the decision to leave, and this could of course still be the case, and maybe even the likely reason for his departure given the significant changes in the leadership structure around him. So it could have been that the team principal has left because he wasn't comfortable with the changes. So we've looked at Otmar's departure, and if anything, that makes this next appointment and next season crucial to the project of Aston Martin. But before we take a look at that, I want to take a moment to ask you to consider subscribing to Behind the Drive. I've got loads more F1 content to come for 2022 and beyond. Thanks. Why 2022 is so important. Now this brings me on nicely to my next key point, which is the importance of the 2022 season for Aston Martin. Coming into Formula 1, Lawrence Stroll publicly shared his goal of competing for world championships within five years. 
Realistically, getting off to a strong start with the new 2022 regulations is crucial in this goal. Even being in the top four teams and beating at least one of Mercedes, Red Bull, Ferrari or McLaren would be an excellent result for the Aston Martin team. But this is where the pressure is clearly on. The team wants to build for the future, and I think it's quite clear that Lawrence Stroll is a ruthless and demanding leader. And to achieve this, Safanauer's replacement is going to be crucial. Changing the team principal is not likely to be an overnight fix, so this next appointment at the top needs to be somebody who's capable of achieving the ambitious goals of Lawrence Stroll. The 2021 season saw Aston Martin drop to 7th in the standings, having finished 4th in 2020. They achieved 77 points across the 22 races, compared to the 195 points from 17 races they achieved the season before. So it was a significant step backwards, but as I've mentioned already, they did not design their 2020 car with 2021 developments in mind, considering the regulations were due to change. So whilst yes, it was a step backwards under the management of Otmar Safanauer, for me, it was probably predictable. And therefore, the new team principal will have to perform from the off. And this is where Aston Martin could be in some trouble. Stroll clearly has high expectations and creates a demanding environment. Whoever takes the position will not only need to manage a rapidly growing team, but also manage the expectations of the leadership structure above them. But regardless of who takes the role, 2022 is crucial for the long-term success of Aston Martin. Pretty much every new Formula 1 team has ambitious targets. Look at Renault for an excellent example of a team that arrive with a goal of winning a championship, but seem to have become trapped in a series of midfield mediocre results. I know it's early in the Aston Martin era of Formula 1, but Lawrence Stroll does not seem to be particularly patient, and so 2022 could easily become a defining season for this team's future. Aston Martin is still one to watch. I think the final point is that despite the disappointing 7th place finish in 2021, Aston Martin is clearly a team to watch. The core of this team is that plucky Force India team that punched above their weight consistently when they didn't have the same budgets of their rivals. In a cost-capped era of Formula 1, they could easily still be a team that maximises their potential with a larger budget. It's tricky to maintain the same organisational culture and ethos when you grow so quickly. And although a new factory will allow the growing team to operate out of a single building as opposed to three and generate the efficiencies of working closer together, it could also have a drawback of being a new environment that leads to a cultural shift. This change could be good or it could be bad, but for most, during a period of change, there comes uncertainty. And in that environment, it's very difficult to excel and be the best team or organisation. I still firmly believe that the Aston Martin team can be a top tier F1 team. There have been teams that have come into the sport and changed it. Look at Red Bull or Mercedes in recent times as teams that have both taken a few seasons to get up to speed and then went on to dominate the sport. If this is the model that Aston Martin is to follow, they need to get the culture bit right first and then ensure that they have the right people designing the car and the right leadership team as well. The problem is that for Mercedes, they joined in 2010, won their first race back in the sport in 2013, and won their first title since returning to the sport in 2014. For Red Bull, they joined in 2005, won their first race in 2009, and then their first championship in 2010. So the path to success can certainly take a long time. Coming into Formula 1 and expecting to be able to compete at the front immediately is simply unrealistic in this era. So for me, Aston Martin are a team that could follow in their footsteps and reach the top, but doing so, they will need to be patient. The model set by Red Bull and Mercedes could have changed, given we're now in a cost-limited era, but we shall see what happens with the new Aston Martin team and the new era of Formula 1. What do you think of Aston Martin's chances? Let me know in the comments, and if you've watched this far, then be sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button as well.